Ruth Fielding at Briarwood Hall or Solving the Campus Mystery by Alice B. Emerson Chapter 20 At Triton Lake So on the morning following the feast day there were two wagonettes waiting at the entrance to the Briarwood grounds to take the girls two miles by road to a certain boathouse on Triton Lake. When Ruth and Helen came out of their room, leaving Mercy cosily ensconced in the window seat with her books and the box of bonbons, the door of the quartet was open, and a faint groan sounded from within. Helen's eyes twinkled as she said, The others have gone, but Jenny's up in dry dock for repairs. No wonder she wouldn't promise to be one of the skating party. The pleasures of the table must be paid for. "'How do you feel now, Heavy?' she added, putting her head in at the door. "'No better. Oh!' came back the complaining voice. "'I do have such dreadful ill fortune. "'I can't eat just a little bit without it distressing me abominably.' "'The chums ran down to the wagonettes and found most of the girls who were going already there. "'Ruth, seeing that there was more room in the second carriage, whisked into it, "'and Helen was following her when Mary Cox came up. "'Going to get in there, Cameron?' she said. "'Well, I'll get in with you.' "'No, I won't,' she suddenly exclaimed, seeing Ruth peering out. "'Come on to the other wagonette. Belle and Luella are there.' For a moment Helen hesitated. Then Mary said, jerking at her sleeve, "'Come on. We want to start in a minute. I've heard from the boys, and I want to tell you. They've sent a whole sleigh-load of things out to the Minnetonka. The boat that's frozen in, you know.' and music and we'll have great fun shh miss reynolds don't know she's such a fuss budget if she knew the boys were coming well oh tom too gasped helen delighted then she turned and said in a whisper ruth come on and let that tattletale alone exclaimed mary cox tell her and she'll run to miss reynolds with it helen went with her had ruth fielding possessed the power of movement just then she would have gotten out of the wagon and run away to the dormitory. But she was stricken motionless, as well as speechless, by her chum's defection. And before she could recover her poise, the wagons had begun to move, rattling over the frozen road toward Triton Lake. Ah, oh, how it hurt! For weeks Ruth had endured slights and haughty looks and innuendos from Mary Cox and her upedes, and the girl from the Red Mill had accepted all uncomplainingly. She had heretofore believed Helen only thoughtless, but this was more than Ruth Fielding could bear. She was the last girl to get into the wagonette, and she turned her head away, that her companions might not see her tears. The other girls chattered and laughed and sang and enjoyed themselves. Ruth Fielding passed the few minutes which elapsed during the drive to the boathouse in trying to stifle her sobs and remove the traces of her emotion. She was tempted to remain in the wagonette and go back to the school at once, for the carriages would return to town, coming out again for the party of Briarwood students late in the afternoon. This thought was her first intention, but as her sobs subsided, she felt more the hurt of the treatment she had received, and this hurt stirred within her a self-assertion that was becoming a more prominent characteristic of Ruth every day, why should she relapse into tears because her chum had done a cruel thing? Hurt as she was, why should she give the fox the satisfaction of knowing she felt the slight? Ruth began to take herself to task for her softness. Let Helen go with the upedes if she wished. Here were nice girls all about her, and all the sweetbriars particularly thought a great deal of her, Ruth knew. She need not mope and weep just because Helen Cameron, her oldest friend, had neglected her. The other girls stood ready to be her friends. They had not noticed Ruth's silence and abstraction, much less her tears. She wiped her eyes hard, gulped down her sobs, and determined to have a good time, in spite of either the upedes or Helen's hardness of heart. The first wagonette reached the shore of the lake some time ahead of the second, and perhaps this fact, as well as the placing of Miss Reynolds in the latter, had been arranged by the wily Miss Cox. "'Oh, Mary Cox!' cried Helen, looking out. "'There's a whole lot of folks here. 
boys but when one of the boys came running to help her down the steps helen shouted with delight she came flopping down into tom cameron's arms how scrumptious you look nell cried her brother kissing her frankly here is bob steele i want you to know him he's my bunky at seven oaks isn't his sister with you madge steele yes miss steele is here gasped helen and where's ruth demanded the excited tom come on and get her we want to get our skates on and make for the steamer the ice is like glass why ruth's in the other wagonette said helen she's not with you exclaimed tom rather chagrined why how's that we happen to get into different ones said his sister to tell the truth she had not thought of ruth since leaving the school is that the other one coming way back on the road there yes said helen here's miss cox tom mary this is my brother bob steele who was a tall blond fellow was at hand to be introduced too his sister jumped out of the wagon and said hello bobby how's your poor croup Madge was a year and a half older than her brother, and always treated him as though he were a very small boy in knickerbockers, if not actually in pinafores. The girls giggled over this, and Bob Steele blushed, but he took his sister's chaffing good-naturedly. Tom Cameron, however, was much disturbed over the absence of Ruth Fielding. "'We'd better hurry out on the ice. We've got an awful strict teacher with us,' said Mary Cox hastily. "'You take care of my sister, too, will you, Bob?' said Tom, bluntly. "'I shall wait and bring Miss Fielding down.' "'Oh, she'll look out for herself,' said Mary Cox, slightingly. "'We must hurry if we want any fun.' "'Helen and I wouldn't have much fun if Ruth were left behind,' declared Master Tom firmly. "'Go on, Bob. We'll catch up with you.' "'Hadn't you better come, too, Tom?' whispered Helen, doubtfully. "'Why, we want Ruth with us, don't we?' demanded the puzzled tom looking at her in wonder go on now we'll be with you shortly why i want to introduce you to the other girls said helen pouting and i haven't seen you myself for so long it's too bad you got separated from your spoon nell said her brother calmly but i shall wait and bring her the others even madge steele were already trooping down to the landing where there were settees for the girls to sit on while their skates were being adjusted. Helen had to run after them, and Tom waited alone the arrival of the second wagonette from Briarwood Hall. End of chapter 20